So life is all about learning how to be uh, respectful to the Holy Spirit in each and every moment and not to let yourself die off of that. Like that should never die off. That should always be your priority that I want to acknowledge the Lord in this moment and respect him because here's what happens over time. You have to fight to be respectful. That's, that's why, that's why when Eve was first created, she was God's pleasure. She was her husband's pleasure, Adam's pleasure. But over time, here comes the serpent. So you understand that time is a place where Satan seeks to see if you still have the Lord in high regard or have that changed, has that been demolished? Look at the areas of your life. Just, just, just think about the areas of your life. Think about the areas of your life when you're on fire and you're doing something. And then what happens to make you stop doing it? What really happens to make you stop doing it? Like, what happens? Like, why do you stop doing it? What happened to your brain? Your brain had that light. And so you was on fire about doing it. That light dims out. And dim light becomes darkness eventually. It dims out. It becomes darkness eventually. And see, what is darkness? Darkness is where you're officially disconnected from that deed, that thought life, that behavior, that lifestyle. So you understand that there is arenas of, you understand that there's arenas of the life of Judas where he is operating as a disciple. But that light, it never gets to full fruition. It's always dim. Which, me, let me show you something. Let me, oh, this is so amazing. This is so powerful. Here's what dim light, what happens in the spirit world when you have dim light? You're hearing God talk from an area of wisdom and righteousness. But there is a side of you that has already made its own wisdom and righteousness. And so what you're hearing God say is not registering. It's not bearing root in you to bear fruit out of you. So that... I remember um, I was telling you that the lo uh, a large percentage of people in a ministry are going to hell. They're not saved because you mistake the ear listening to the gospel as the life doing the gospel. Are you hearing me? You mistake attendance as ascension. And you can be in attendance and not be ascending. You could be in attendance and not on your way to heaven. Because remember, these Pharisees are attending Jesus' meeting to judge Jesus on the behalf of Satan. You can't say that they're not listening to what he's teaching because they are but it's not registering in their heart. And until it registers into your heart, that's when the change happens. Look at what Psalm 119 says right here. Psalm 119 verse 105 says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. And it's a light unto my path. It's a lamp unto my feet. It's a light unto my path. Look what it's saying. It's a lamp 
unto my feet, a light unto my path. What you 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 could hear this, but what is this really saying? It's saying your words is turning on the lamp of my brain to operate in light. That means that it's registering in me for the purpose of transformation and deliverance. I'm becoming free. I am a new person. There's newness of life now operating in me through this word entering into me. But see, this is David talking. David is saying, my feet is not going to sin against you now because of this word it has entered inside of me. So even my feet can't do what's contrary to this word because it's not just at my ear. It's not just at my eye. It's inside of me. It has bared root in me. So now it bears fruit out of me. Saints, you know the scary thing is this. You don't want to be in the number of people that you're in the presence of Jesus. But you won't let the presence of Jesus get in you. You say, what's the difference? It's possible. It's possible. Let me show you. Let me show you. You can't tell me that the chief priests are not in the presence of Jesus. You can't tell me that they're not in his presence because they're in his presence. You can see them because they're actually arguing. Now, I'm going to give you a revelation about arguments that's real profound. I'm going to show you something. They're in Jesus' presence, but they won't let Jesus' presence be in them. Now, how does Jesus' presence get in you? His word. So the words that he's speaking, they won't let it enter into them to give them light. So even though they hear him saying all these things that will change them, their heart is stony. Now, let me show you what the Bible talk about a stony heart. What is what hap what happens to the heart when it's stony? It, it it resists God, hoping that God will flee from it. Meaning, don't keep on reiterating this. I I, I don't want to abide by this. I don't want to continue in this. I don't want to adapt to this. So the Bible talks about in James four to resist the devil, and the devil shall flee. But in a hard heart, you resist God and hope God will flee. Cain was actually at a point where he wanted God to stop coming to him and talking sense to him. Did you know that? Look at the reaction of Cain when God says, where's your brother? He's sarcastic. He's upset. He's irritated. These are all things that show that you don't have light in you. You're not hearing me. You're not hearing me. You can look at your temperance and say, oh, I, I'm irritated. I'm frustrated. I'm short fused because you don't have light in you. Look at what's going on with Cain. Cain doesn't have light in him, and Cain is becoming more irritated, more agitated, more sarcastic, more bold. He's more bold to say what he wants to say. Imagine he's telling God, I am not my brother's keeper. Like, Cain, Cain is actually telling God, leave me alone. I don't want to talk about this. I don't want to answer your question. Get out my face, please. Do you understand? Cain 
had a stony heart, which the stony heart means that even when you come to counsel me, Lord, to help me to make the right decision, that's what counsel is. So Isaiah chapter 9 said that Jesus is the wonderful counselor. He's the mighty God. He's the everlasting father. He's the prince of peace. But when the word said that he is the wonderful counselor, it means that his counsel is full of wonders. And wonder is a word that means amazement. Meaning that you value the results. That the, that, that the, um, that the ending, the outcome is intriguing. Holy Spirit. So wonderful counselor means that when you do listen to the counsel of God, you become amazed at what it produces in you, for you, around you. You listen to the counsel of God. He tell you disconnect from a person. Then later on, you find out that they was trying to kill you. You, it's a wonder. You're, it's wonderful. Because you recognize, wow, this is amazing. How can I, I not see that death was waiting for me here? But at least I obeyed the voice. Now I can see. There's people that hear God tell them not to catch a flight. They don't catch the flight because everybody is rushing. And they have other means to catch flights. And the Lord tell them, don't catch that one right there. And they obey. And then they find out they had an engine problem. The counsel of God is full of wonder, which means amazement, which means that you approve of the results. Do you, un isn't this amazing how I'm breaking this down to you? So I, I, I want you to look at this. Look what the word of God says in Psalm 119 verse 130. It says, the entrance of your words giveth light. The entrance of your words giveth light. The entrance of your word giveth light. Do you, do you see this? The Bible is saying that when the words of Jesus enter into you, when it is Entering into your heart, it, it is giving light. Which means that light is not in a person just because they talk real good or they, or they seem real good. They have to let the words of Jesus enter them because that's the only supply of light. Now, now look at this. Light and darkness, you often think about it as measurements of of, of, of shine, measurements of shine. Like the light is shining like this, darkness, you can't see nothing, you bump into stuff. Okay, but let me show you this. Light is really God. It's the Lord. And see, light is a, 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 a mental surgery where he's, transfer for, he's transferring how his brain has storage thoughts to you. Um, so it's a laser beam transference from the great God Jehovah. It is the Lord transferring. He's, he's air dropping his thoughts. He's sending the text messages to your mental phone. He's sending the email to your mental mind, your mental computer. And the light is now, it's giving you an installment of godliness. Wow. So, so look at this here. When the Bible talks about you being the light of the world, is telling you that the people that are talking 
in the world do not have what you need mentally to make it to heaven. The Holy Spirit is revealing that stuff to you for the world. So imagine when you get sent to a workplace and you're around worldly people and they start having an influence on you and you start sinning with them, you're not the light of the world. You are the world. God has to find another light for that department of world in that workplace because you reject it. Are you seeing this? The same way when God puts you in a family, that family represents the world. That's why none of them are wealthy in God. None of them have houses and land. None of them have the hundredfold return. You, you can talk how good you want about them. Blah, 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 blah. Go ask them the last time that they visited the throne of grace, the throne of heaven. They saw an angel. They experienced the heavenly realms. They ascended. They, they, they traveled and was teleported by the Holy Ghost. I'm not talking about astral projection. Astral projection is the counterfeit of Satan wishing that Satan could present Satan's self woeing people as if Satan is the Holy Ghost. Satan is trying to imitate the Holy Ghost through astral projection. You go ask them the last time they traveled in the spirit, they had ascended in the spirit. They, don't, they will look at you like you're doing some type of magic, some witchcraft, like you done lost your mind. Why don't they understand that? Because they're of the world. Let me help you understand something. In the world, there is darkness. Darkness is disconnection from the mind of God. Darkness is ignorance of spiritual weapons. So I, I want you to hear this. That's why you could be following your man of God and still be of the world. The people heard Jesus said, eat of my flesh, drink of my blood. And the first thing they talk about, they thought about is cannibalism and all that weird stuff. Oh, oh this man telling us to eat his flesh. See, this is witchcraft because they was of the world all along. They was looking at themselves follow Jesus from this location to the next location physically. But it wasn't happening mentally. Geographically, their mind was in hell while their body was in the presence of heaven. And so that's why you even see that Lucifer and the 130 angels, these are millions of angels. They had to get kicked out of heaven because they had taken their mind and chose to plant it in darkness though they were in light. Now the Bible says that Satan masquerades as an angel of light. Satan is jealous of the angel of light. Now, let me tell you the mystery about the angel of light. The angel of light is the angel of the gospel. And the angel of light is responsible for, for the preaching of the gospel, for the gospel to reach the four corners of the earth. Watch this here. Go to Revelation 14.6. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth to every nation, kindred, and tongue, and people. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. 
Ain't no way. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. Look what the word says. I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven. What was the angel's job? The angel's job, he had the everlasting gospel to preach unto them. Sepriala ni kovri en si To preach unto them that dwell where? On the earth. Of every kindred and every nation. And every tongue and every people. My goodness. Angels, they have different, they have different giftings. They have different specialties. Different attributes. And angels have, they have different garments that signify the grace that they're operating in, the office that they're carrying, the mission that they have for a day. When the angel went with Abram's servant, the angel had one objective, to find the wife for Isaac. Angels, they don't drift in their assignment and they're not double-minded and they don't get confused and they don't get entangled with stress because they stick to the one mission. They are in submission to the one mission. All of the mental things that downtrod the mind, you can connect it to the fact that you're trying to do many things that are not the mission. It's not the mission, but you're trying to do it. You're trying to make it happen. So Psalm 119 verse uh, 130 said that the entrance of your word giveth light. So imagine the word is giving light. There are people that reject the word. When you reject the word, you don't have light that the word gives in order for you to be on God's side of agreement. So I want you to hear this. Our argument is what we see Pharisees operated in when they saw Jesus because they was rejecting the words of this man that was really God. But they wanted to acquaint him in the bracket of man where there's flaws and in in accuracies in devil worship. If you pit him in the bracket of man, you could acquaint the man to be devilish because man have been known to worship the devil. But if you pit him in the bracket of God, then you'll have to receive his word. And if you receive his word, the word giveth light. And if the word gives you light, now you have might to carry out righteousness, doing things Completely God's ways. Now look at this. I want you to see this. It's so amazing. If you ever find yourself in an argument, an argument is passionately expressing, expressing verbally your opinion and perspective about a thing. Now, let me show you something. If you are in the position of submission at your workplace, how could you ever argue with the boss? Because submission means that you are given an opportunity to subtract the knowledge 
from that boss and let it become a part of you, not for you to keep the knowledge that you have and passionately defend it. Let's go even further. So the Pharisees was arguing with Jesus because they had already put up a defense mechanism for the information they had. No, I'm talking to you. Listen, 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 listen. The only reason they're arguing with him because they're saying your words is going against our information that we already have. What you're saying is contradicting the knowledge that we have already obtained. So you are the devil, and this information we have is of God. And Jesus is saying the traditions of men have made the word of God none effect. This is dangerous because that reveals to you that tradition is a system that Satan gives to man so that when God shows up in your life and begins to talk to you, you're already against what he will say. And then the tradition will actually tell you. This is why so many people operate in tradition. The tradition will actually tell you, which is Satan, that this is of God and what Jesus is saying is of the devil. So that you'll never recognize what, which one is which. So in deception, in tradition, Satan is telling you what Jesus is revealing to you is of the devil. And what Satan revealed to you is of God. So it makes the word of God an effect because Satan doesn't classify that word as demonic. Satan has classified that word as if it is of the devil. So now you already got your defense up against that word. So then you'll start to argue against that word because now Satan has successfully convinced you that what Jesus is saying is wrong. So now you are actually expressing verbally your disagreement and your stance against it. When you're in witchcraft, Satan looks like Jesus. And when you're in witchcraft, Jesus looks like Satan. The Bible revealed that witchcraft in the Old Testament when we deal with Samuel and Saul, witchcraft happened after a prophet gave a man information about his calling that he should do. And that information was explained to him and he gave him an instruction. And then the man decided, no, the information I already have is sufficient for me. And, and what I should do is not what you instructed and what you're introducing me to. What I should do is what I feel is best for this situation. And what's best for this situation, I shouldn't kill all the Amalekites. They got children here. They got innocent bystanders. They got people that ain't do nothing wrong. That's what the world always say. When the earthquake happened, all these innocent people died. When the fire happens, all these innocent people got burned. When the shooting happens, all the innocent people got shot. That's what the world says. Because who told you that they were innocent? Who told you that they had no fault? Who told you that they was at a place that God didn't schedule them to be and they still was willing to go there because they're not subject to the God that created them? Who told you that they were innocent when they end up in a violent situation? How many times did the Holy Ghost speak to their heart and tell them not to go to that violent situation? But because they have no respect for the creator that made them, they defy his counsel and his warnings and his rebukes and they still go. But then we sit around and say, oh, these innocent people died. <laughs> the children that were ate by two she bears after they called Elisha Baldy and they was mocking Elisha and he cursed them in the name of the Lord these were children the Bible said 
over 40. I think it was about 42. All of them went to hell. Now you look and say, uh, according to what Satan has taught, traditionally, these are children. No, 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 no. These are souls that have accumulated enough knowledge to know what they're doing that it is wrong. And they join together to say, even though this is wrong, let us all do it. Let us have fun in doing it. And they made their decision not knowing that that decision was them talking against God because God had hid himself as that prophet Elijah. And now they was dealing with their creator. That's why children are in hell. Because once they be able to identify, if a child commits suicide right now because they're getting bullied at school, they're going to hell. That's unfair. No, it's not unfair. Let me show you something that you never saw before. So you was given life and you put yourself in the bracket that you're a child, but you're bold enough to say to the God that created you, I'm going to cut the life supply off. I'm going to kill the life supply. Even though you gave it to me, even though you entrusted me with it, I'm not going to let your will be done, which is life on earth for me so that I can serve you and obey you and do a work for you. I'm going to cut it off because I don't like it. Nobody that commits suicide goes to heaven. You think you're going to be killing yourself in heaven? <laughs> you think you're going to be, oh, I'm out of here. You think you're going to be doing that in heaven? You think we're going to find you down the Jerusalem street, hanging on the side of a tree? What happened to Broham right here? What happened to Brohamster? Brohamster is hanging from a tree. You think you're going to be doing that in heaven? You mentally... Demon possess. And see, I'm showing you something. We have all these ideologies on earth. We, we defend women. We defend children. We defend poor people. We defend black people. We have all these different categories of defense. This shouldn't happen to this person because they're black. This shouldn't happen to this person because they're a child. This shouldn't happen to a person because it's a woman. This shouldn't happen to a person because this is a poor person. This shouldn't happen to a person because they're sick. We have all these traditions that we make the word of the Lord none effect. And you don't want to hear the truth about it because you already done surrogated in your mind a system where Satan interprets what's right and what's wrong. Wow. We forget that the same word has God dealing with children, the poor, has him dealing with a woman and dealing with people of different races and cultures. But how in this modern day have you sanctified it and made it more about them? A woman, a child, the poor, black people, Spanish people, white people. You made it about categories, poor people, when the real priority is Jesus. Because Lot's wife turned back. The Bible said that the Lord set on fire. A Achan took from the enemy's camp after Joshua told them by the word of the Lord, don't take from the enemy's camp. And the Lord revealed it to Joshua. Joshua set him and his wife and his children on fire. And then God gave them victory. The children of Israel, they won their wars. They won their against the enemy. They received their wealthy place. They walked into their promised land because God got rid of all the status quos because it's not about them. It's about him. And that's why people miss the will of God for their life because you want to exalt idols in your life. 
You want to exalt idols. You want to pit people on pedestals. And, oh, oh, no, no. And da, 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 da. No, no, no. Use all that energy for the Lord. And let your pedestal be one person, Jesus, the son of God, who is God over all the heavens and all the earth. His father saw fit and has pleasure in giving him the power of veto to be the president over all things moving and living. And what did Jesus do? Transfer that power to man. If you don't operate in authority, you'll never be healed, even though Jesus is healer. Because that healing power, it requires you to cooperate with it and for you to believe with your whole heart. The Bible said if you believe that you receive, you shall have it. Whatsoever things you ask praying, if you believe that you receive it, you shall have it. If you believe that you receive it, you shall have it. If you believe that you receive it, you shall have it. So if you don't believe that you receive, you're not going to have it. If you don't believe that you receive, you're not going to have it. If you don't believe that you receive, you're not going to have it. If you don't believe that you receive your authority, the Bible says, what is man? I think that Psalm chapter 8, that you have given him dominion. You're mindful of him. You have have given him dominion. You've given him dominion. You've given him dominion. And that dominion, if you don't use it, you'll suffer. You'll go through hard times. You'll go through hard health. You'll go through hard finances. You'll go through hard relationships. You'll go through hard seasons if you don't use your authority. Speak! What is one of the major demonstrations of authority? It is the tongue. Use your tongue aright. It is a tree of life. Speak and you'll reap what you say. You reap what you sow out of your mouth. See, you just think that you reap what you sow out of your hand. You reap what you sow out of your mouth. Oh, I'm so sick and tired of, of doing this. And God sent you to do it. You find out that you start backsliding. Because you talk yourself into being backslidden. You could talk yourself into being an enemy of God. That woman that was in the garden of Eden, before she ate of that tree, she had to speak herself into agreement with the serpent. She had to talk herself into doubt. She had to talk herself into misunderstanding. She had to talk herself into deception. If you ever study people before they are destroyed by the devil, they have to speak their own destruction. I'm not going to be here. I'm not pitting up with that. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to Nineveh. Don't go to the cross, Lord. Don't go to the cross, Lord. Don't go to the cross, Lord. Get thee behind me, Satan. Why is the Lord calling this person Satan? Because what did the Lord say? Peter, you don't savor the things of God. You savor the things of man. And what are the things of man to worship the devil? Behold, I set before you today life and death. Choose this day who you're going to serve. You're going to serve the devil, you, or you're going to serve Jesus. You can't be in between. Lukewarmness, I'll spew you out my mouth. What is that telling you? That you can't be some timey 30% with the Lord, 50% with the, 70% uh, uh, with the devil. Now you either for the devil, you either for Jesus. And if you're for Jesus, spend your time in prayer, seeking his face, going after his heart, and calling on him so that deliverance will be strong within you and he could use you to deliver others. Let's go to Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8, look what it said in verse 31. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders. He began to teach them that the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders. See, rejection is divine. It's a part of the will of God. People are going to reject you. But always remember, people that reject you is God allowing you to walk out his will the way it's supposed to happen. Because those people that reject you, they are not a part of, 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 of your success story. They're not a part of your success story. So oftentimes you feel bad when people reject you, but you should be happy. I don't want to lose my success. 
I don't want to lose my progress. I don't want to lose my promise. I don't want to lose my inheritance. So blessed be God. Giddy up, pit bull. Look what it says. And of the chief priests, he'll be rejected of chief priests. This was the prominent preachers in the land. The prominent preachers with large followings and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. Look at verse 32. I want you to listen to me for these last two minutes. Look at this here. And he spake that, that, that openly to everybody. Look what the Bible say in verse uh, 32. It said, Peter took Jesus and began to rebuke him. What? Let's read this real slow in verse 32. And Peter, after Jesus told him he's going to be rejected and he's going to be killed and he's going to rise after three days, the Bible said Peter took Jesus and began to rebuke Jesus. Familiarity is the misinterpretation of favor. Familiarity is the misinterpretation of kindness. Familiarity is a temptation after Jesus is being nice to you. See, Peter was eating from Jesus' hand. Peter's whole life had changed because Jesus changed his entire schedule. Peter is not with his wife. He's not with his biological family. He has become a disciple. He's not fishing and catching fishes. Now he's a fisher of men. His whole path has changed by Jesus. Jesus has given him a success story and delivered him. And Peter has misinterpreted the favor. Familiarity is when Jesus marries you. Familiarity is when Jesus calls you to be his assistant. This temptation is in all these things. Familiarity is when Jesus feeds you food. When Jesus is attracted to you. When Jesus is attracted to you. When Jesus is attracted to you. Remember this. When Jesus is attracted to someone with an impure heart, their impurity responds to his attraction over time. So Jesus is attracted, but the person has an impure heart. The attraction of Jesus is to cleanse the heart. The impurity of the heart eventually responds to Jesus over time if you don't let Jesus cleanse the heart. Let me show you something. I'm going to show you something. This is so shocking. This is so shocking. Watch this. Watch this. Let's go to John chapter 13. Look what it says. 
So after Jesus had washed their feet, I want you to see this. Jesus is washing their feet. Wow, wow. Why is Jesus washing their feet? It is a part of the favor. It's a part of the kindness. It's a part of Jesus making them see the genuine and pure love, the attraction that he has to them. He's serving them and operating as a servant, though he is their God. And I want you to see this. Familiarity is when you mishandle God serving you. You mishandle it. You see it as an opportunity to manifest the evil rather than relinquish the evil. The Bible says the goodness of God leads to repentance. Wow. Look at John 13, verse 8. Peter said to Jesus, here we go with Peter again. Here we go with Peter because Peter is struggling with familiarity. He's becoming too familiar with Jesus because Jesus take him on the Mount of Transfiguration. Jesus take him to the house of Jairus when he raised the daughter from the dead. Jesus calling Peter to go on secret missions with him while Philip it's still at home. <laughs> Bartholomew. Doing something else. Jesus said, Peter, come on. I'm showing you the danger of familiarity. Look at this here. John chapter 13, verse 8. Look what it says. Peter said to Jesus while he's washing everybody's feet, you shall never wash my feet. It sounds good, don't it? Sounds good, don't it? But here's what's so wild. Peter is giving Jesus instruction and commandments. I I'm showing you why Peter ended up denying Jesus. See, 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 you often don't catch the moments leading up to your own demise. But remember what I told you long ago in this teaching that I'm teaching right now of how people's mouth talk themselves into their own destruction. Look what it says here. Watch this here. He says, you shall never wash my feet. He didn't say, Lord, please don't wash my feet. I don't want to see you do it. Look at his approach. He said, thou shalt never wash my feet. Here Jesus telling people that I'm here to wash your feet. He's telling the disciples, I'm washing your feet. And Peter rises up and talks to Jesus to his face and says, you shall never wash my feet. Showing you something. And then we wonder why Peter is saying, I don't know this man. Weeks later. 
Peter had already spoke his death so many times. Peter is speaking his failure so many times. He is prophesying, I'm going to fall short of the glory. I'm going to miss my calling. I'm going to reject eternal life. He's speaking against it every time he opens up his mouth and he's defying what Jesus is saying. Watch this here. Peter said to Jesus, you shall never wash my feet. And Jesus answered Peter and said, if I do not wash your feet, you have no part with me. Wait. Now, I could take you to the spiritual implements of what this means, and I could define this, and I could take you to the hermeneutics and the philosophics and the theologics of this. But let me take you to another angle when Jesus says this. We know I could take you to the feet and the definition of the feet, but when he says that if if I don't wash your feet, you have no part with me. What he's saying is this. If the word that I'm saying to you that I'm going to do, you could find another word. And you could choose another instruction. And you could choose another commandment for your life. And you could discover another path for your life. I'm telling you what I'm going to do. And you're telling me that I ain't going to do that with you. So in your mind, God is talking to you and not me. <laughs> you, you, the Holy Ghost told you to tell me not to wash your feet. The Holy Ghost now is telling you instructions on what I should do as Jesus. Peter is now Jesus' master. And Jesus is now Peter's disciple. You wonder why marriages don't work. Because the wife want to be the husband. You wonder why sonship don't work. Because the son want to be the master. The disciple want to be the teacher. Now you know why daughtership don't work. Because when you leave the place of humbleness. And familiarity steps in. And you become so familiar. You change roles. And God ain't going to pit up with that. Korah went from needing Moses to deliver him from bondage to him telling the people that Moses is the deceiver and he has come to set everybody free from the bondage master that is named Moses. Korah went from needing Moses to set him free to now telling the people, I'll come set you free from Moses. Moses is bringing y'all into the lies of the devil. Moses is the devil. You know how crazy a mofo is. You know how crazy these mofos is to get to that degree to now say that Moses I, 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 God is using me to tell you all Korah why you didn't get them out of the grip of Pharaoh then where was your antennas when they was mourning to get out of the bondage of Pharaoh oppressing them why you didn't get them out but now in the after fruits when they out now he becomes the spokesman talking about God told me. Saints, do you know 
If you don't operate in humility and you don't reject familiarity, you'll look like a plum fool and won't even recognize it. Satan will make a complete fool out of you. It won't even make sense. Do you know what worker of iniquity means? That Satan is now using you as a laughing stock in the kingdom of hell, the kingdom of darkness. Demons are laughing at you because they know the destiny that God had for you. And they were able to trick you to trade that in and trade, sell your birthright for bondage. Familiarity happens to people when they don't maintain their Fear of the Lord. That's why foolishness steps in. Because wisdom would have kept you. Righteousness would have kept you. But see, foolishness steps in. You know why? Because we're dealing with the factor of familiarity. And now the roles have changed. Miriam went from needing Moses to give her the word of the Lord to tell an Aaron, the word of the Lord come to me also. He come to you too. God ain't only speaking to him. He's speaking to us. We can hear from God. Miriam. Miriam. What's happening? What's going on mentally? Saints, the first sin consisted of somebody that was called to be in submission and to call to help. Switching their roles to giving the instruction to their instructor. The first sin, no, I'm showing you something. The first sin in heaven was somebody that was created started slandering the creator and imitated the creator to the other creations, which were angels, and said, listen to me, I'm really God. Listen to me, I'm really the righteous one. Listen to me, I'm really the one that, that's here for you. I'm here for your well-being. I care about you. He don't care about you. I want to give you the right way. He not, he tricking you. He doing you wrong. I come to do you right. The first sin in heaven and the first sin on earth both consisted, uh, 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 it, 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 it consisted of two individuals that were mentally warped. That they was created for a purpose to help and they chose hell. They was created for a purpose to submit and they chose to rule. And you see the woman telling her husband, eat. Eat of this tree. I already ate of it. And it's good. I'm telling you to eat. She's given him an instruction. And God created her to receive instructions from him. Lucifer created to receive instructions from God. Now given the one third of the angels instructions to defy God. And you see that the first sin in heaven and the first sin on earth is all familiarity. And both of them became familiar with their positions and familiar with the favor of God and the goodness of God and the kindness of God and the niceness of God. And they took it as if God was a punk, that God wasn't going to do nothing. And they unlocked his wrath. Both occasions, occasions. Both of them got kicked out of where they were. Lucifer got kicked out of heaven. Adam got kicked out of the garden. Adam was uh, the woman name as well. She received the name Eve after she sinned. But she was Adam. Her name was Adam. So you see, the first, this is so important. This is so important. The first sin on earth, the first sin in heaven, 
We looking at familiarity. We looking at people that misinterpreted favor. And the person that we call the devil today is the very person that misinterpreted favor. They thought because they were being treated so well and they was being served by God. God was serving Lucifer with kindness. Do you know that servanthood doesn't take away greatness? Servanthood is when you are bringing pleasure to someone and you're supplying something they need and you're giving them something they desire. And Lucifer not only was serving God, but God was serving Lucifer. And Lucifer took the servanthood of God as a, as a weakness. Always remember, familiarity will always tempt you in your assignment. Let, let me be real raw with you. In life, you often wonder, why do wives turn against their husbands? Why? Especially, not, 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 we're not dealing with the world. We're talking about even people that call themselves believers. We have a pastor, and then he called this woman his first lady. How do they end up foes? How do they end up against each other? How is she so ma ba 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 ba? And you're like, well, what's up? What's up? Hey, isn't he a man of God? Let me show you something. That woman gets to see that man's penis. If, if you got children, you can shut me off. You, you can turn down the volume and shut me off so they don't hear this part. If, if you got children listening to me. Uh, that woman gets to see his penis. That woman gets to see him sexually. That woman gets to see him when he's not in prayer, when he's just relaxing. Remember, God was not the Bible said God was walking in the cool of the day. The voice of God was walking in the cool of the day. God is walking, which means he's exercising. <laughs> he's chilling. While wives become dishonorable to their husbands because their husbands start to laugh with them and joke with them. Their husbands ask them questions. What you want to eat? What you want to drink? Their husbands is not saying, thus saith the Lord, I know that you want some chicken Alfredo. Thus saith the Lord, I know that you want some, some, some crab legs. By the way, crab legs is cockroaches, so I just... I'm using crab legs, but <laughs> I won't break your stilo. I'm not saying that because, you know, I'm <laughs> because those of y'all that eat crabs, I mean, you backing up your system and it, it carries, it carries cancerous stuff. People that eat, eat crabs and, and eat, eat uh, uh, different lobsters and stuff like that, that you eat a giant cockroach. And it creates toxins inside of your system and it builds up over time. And that's why people be having um, issues with their liver and issues with their inward body. Because that stuff is like you eat in poison. And so it's crazy how people like crab legs and all that stuff. And, uh, uh, it's crazy. It's crazy. The same way how people eat chitterlings. Why are you eating chitterlings? It, it, it's, it's, it's things that Satan has set up to destroy man, and man is so bold. I mean, I eat, I eat my crab legs. I eat my chitterling. Crazy. <laughs> I'm telling you, and imagine you, you're speaking death boldly that you're doing it. But let me say this to you. So a wife gets to see her husband, even if he's a man of God, in a state of Sexuality. And so if that woman is not pure in heart, the temptation of familiarity, she can't fight it off. It will overtake her. 
Are you, are you seeing this? The same thing. Let me go even further. I'm showing you all aspects. So uh, a child, if their parents are a man of God or a woman of God, they are seeing their parents cook food for them and take out trash. They're seeing their parents um, take showers and uh, mop the floor and, 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 and uh, you know, uh, uh, pitch chandeliers or, 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 or clean the lamps and, and clean the bathroom. They're seeing all that stuff and they become, if that child is not wise and in the fear of the Lord, that child starts to familiar, become familiar with that parent. And everybody see that parent as a man of God, woman of God, but they see that parent as this is just a normal person. You watched a movie with me the other day. You was watching Finding Nemo with me. <laughs> you, you was at the AMC theaters with me the other day. We were shopping at Walmart yesterday. Are you hearing me? And so you wonder how did that, ri that child rise up and start cussing out their parents when they are still a child? I'm not talking about you a grown-up. Some of y'all be grown-ups, and then you be up there talking, I got to listen to what my mama say. Baby, grow up. Grow up. You, if you grow up, your parents ain't supposed to be guiding you all the days of your life. You're supposed to grow up and mature and follow the Holy Ghost. That's how it's supposed to be. But I'm talking about when people are children. And you wonder why that child rises up to disrespect their parents. And you're like, that's a man of God. That's a woman of God. But familiarity, they can't overcome it. Because they're looking at the fact, I just saw my mama throw up the other day. She was sick. So she's not no woman of God because a woman of God wouldn't get sick. <laughs> you, you're not listening to me. I just saw my, my dad, he went to the hospital. They had him hooked up to the tubes, and I was sitting right there when they had him hooked up to the tubes. So I know he not no man of God, because men of God don't get hooked up to no tubes. This is what goes on in people's mind. I'm talking to you. And in their mind, they say, this definitely can't be no man of God. This, even, this is just my dad. This is a normal man. They see him as a man of God, but I saw him with tubes hooked up. Meanwhile, the man of God right there, and God know the heart of that child, and God would expose it through the man of God getting sick. And while that child's heart is coming out, God is showing that which was in that child all along. Is even for the man of God to see. It's for the woman of God to see. So I'm showing you people operate in familiarity because they're always around the person. When you only get to see them every now and again, they're around the person all the time. So they start saying, well, I just heard them cough. So this definitely not the woman of God because woman of God don't cough. <laughs> uh, I, I just heard them sneeze. Oh, this is... This ain't no man of God because men of God don't sneeze. I remember years ago, I would be around uh, different sons. And they're like, we never see you go to the bathroom. We don't even believe you go to the bathroom. Do you go to the bathroom? We never see you. you we we Because they keep on peeing and stuff. <laughs> I could go a whole day and you, you, I'm I'm good. They, I gotta go pee. I gotta go pee. Like, what the f what's wrong with you? But see, my bladder is good. <laughs> my bladder is good. I could be on a 20 hour road trip. I, my bladder is good. I don't got no deficiency there. But what if I did have that problem? So you're going to treat me as if I'm not supernatural if I got that problem? If I use the bathroom as much as you? 
If you see me going, go, you say, pee break, pee break, pee break. If you see me doing that, so that means you're going to disrespect me. But you praise me because you think I'm supernatural because you don't see me operating like everybody. I've been at conferences before. I'm feeding everybody. You look at me. I order something, but I ain't even eating what I ordered. I done preach. I done went all day. I ain't take no water breaks. I'm going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So then you praise me and say, you're supernatural. Because look at you. You're not eating. Everybody hungry. Look, you're good. But what if I was eating? So now you're going to disrespect me? Because I'm eating like you? The same way, sleep. Oh, oh, you know, you haven't slept for days. I've done conferences before where I'm, I'm on the go all the time. Bam, 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 bam. I'm just going and going and going. Oh, you're supernatural. You don't, you don't got to sleep. So if I go to sleep, I'm not supernatural? <laughs> you, 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 you see how familiarity how is crazy? You start to, you, in familiarity, you do that. But then if the man of God does it, you say, oh, oh, that's not no man of God. Huh? Just think about it. So if I go to sleep, I'm not a man of God. But the Bible says that Jesus is sleeping inside of the boat. I don't rebuke people many a times now. Because sometimes people be like, you know, prophet, you're so supernatural, you don't even sleep. I tell them I do sleep. <laughs> you you th if you think that not sleeping is supernaturality, you is millions of years back. You on the magic school bus with Clifford, Clifford the big red, red dog with Barney driving in the front seat. <laughs> with Elmo in the back seat. You millions, if you think that sleep takes away from divinity. If somebody sleep, no, we created to sleep. You see how people look when they don't sleep? Look how they got the big old SpongeBob eyes. Look like somebody put a big old pillow and put it right underneath there. Bow! The other day I was playing basketball with a man. I could tell he don't sleep. He got the big old golf ball, golf ball pillows underneath his eyes. He had to tell us, huh? I said, is that a three-pointer? Uh, uh? It's like he answered me with his eyes all the time. All I see is some big old, if it is in love, why do I feel this way? Why do you stay on my heart? That's all I see with the big old eyes. I said, is it a three-point? Ah! Look like Bart Simpson right there trying to shoot the ball right there. Bart Simpson. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When Jesus was on earth, you think Jesus took baths and washed himself? In that time? Do you think that Abraham took baths? Do you think that Isaac took baths? Be careful how you operate in familiarity. Familiarity will have you finding things to criticize your leader. You, you're finding things to, to try to bracket them and say they're not as high as they seem. They're low. Mm. 
my goodness. When you're in familiarity, you'll act like the Holy Ghost has a secret relationship with you that goes against what your leader is saying. Yeah, you said that, but the Holy Ghost telling me to go join that church. Yeah, you said that, but the Holy Ghost telling me to go reconnect with my family. Yeah, yeah, you, 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 you told me that, but the Holy Ghost is telling me that I should go and I should reconcile. With Ike Turner. I know you told me not to. But I believe that. Ike Turner loves me. I'm not looking. At all the bad. I'm looking at the good. I have to see Ike Turner the way that God sees. Ike Turner and thou. Thine have seen thine Ike Turner. As thine thee shall thine forgive all thine sin. We all are thine not perfect. So as thou is not perfect, no thou is perfect. So why would thine criticize Ike when we are all alike? You have a, you have a voice that's Contradicting everything. That's the scary thing about relationship. Because. If somebody already has a relationship. With spirits. Those spirits are not going to agree with you. So how will you get that person to agree with you? How? It's impossible. Because those spirits, they are in another kingdom. Many people are getting into relationships and they, they have spirits. So you coming into connection with somebody while you have spirits. So what are your spirits going to say when they are there to lead you and guide you. It's going to go opposite. So lastly. Gehazi. Gehazi. He saw Elisha. He saw Elisha. Need his help. He saw Elisha. Ask for his assistant. He saw Elisha. Ask him questions. He saw. He saw the Elisha that wasn't saying. I see the. King coming to take my head off. The word of knowledge, Elisha. See, he saw the Elisha that wasn't acting like Mr. Know-it-all. Are you catching this? The Elisha that will say, hey, Gehazi, how you feeling today? Rather than the Elisha that say, thus saith the Lord, this depression you've been going through. And this suicidal thoughts you have, you see, he's seeing the Elisha that is fellowshipping with him. Familiarity happens when there is fellowship. That means that God is talking with you, not to you. There's a difference. There's a difference when God talks to you and God talks with you. Because when he talks with you, it's a fellow. It's fellowship. He's acting like your buddy. And many people can't handle the Lord when he acts friendly. They take it as, okay, I'll do you dirty. They take it as, okay, I'll retaliate, I'll, I'll betray, I'll be disloyal, I'll do this behind your back. No, no, no. The fellowship place is a realm where God lowers himself to commune with you. And oftentimes people take that place and they fall prey to familiarity. Wow. 
My goodness. My goodness. My goodness. Familiarities. The more you see somebody, the more you have to dominate so that familiarity doesn't have place in your soul. The more you see somebody, the more you see somebody, the more you hear somebody, the more you're around somebody, you have to keep reminding yourself to respect them. You have to keep on reminding yourself to love them. You have to keep on reminding yourself to help them. You have to keep on reminding yourself to bless them. You have to keep on reminding yourself to honor them. You have to keep on reminding yourself to bring pleasure to them, to assist them, to make them experience a godly encounter with you on how you treat them. See, Jesus was looking for Jesus in his disciples. Jesus was looking for himself. And that's what he was so angry. He kept saying, you faithless and perverse generation. He's saying, I can't see myself yet. I, I'm spending so much time for me to see myself. I'm giving my time for me to see myself. Saints, right now, you think, right now, you, I'm working all day. Today, I ran, I did over 18 miles. I did broadcast. I prayed. I mentored today. I mentored in secret. I did classes. I taught. I taught you publicly. I taught privately. I, I don't work all day. Look, do you know where I'm at right now? It's 1.17 a.m. You think my body not tired? You think my eyes not hurting? <laughs> you, think, you, think, you think that that's not a part? You think that it, it, it's just comfort, just sitting down talking for hours? You go try to do it. Go talk, go talk, go talk for, 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 for 20, 15 minutes and see how it feels. Imagine I sacrifice this time with you and then you just go and you, you make no registry of what I'm saying. You, you think that, that that's going to go <laughs> well with you? Just think about that. So reciprocate, re 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 reciprocate, uh, let, let it be reciprocal, reciprocate. <laughs> uh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come breathe upon me, breath of God. Breathe upon me, Spirit of the Lord, as I lift my soul in surrender to your name. Most high, I am yielding to your Spirit. I am walking in your love. Jesus, I adore. Jesus, I adore. Jesus, I adore your holy name. So even when I talk with Dr. Murdoch, I never say anything sarcastic. I never say anything that will hurt him. I never ask him something that will make him feel uncomfortable. I never make his brain get hurt. If he asks me something, I understand what he is asking me it for. And I give him an experience with my answers. 
I don't ignore him. I don't be sarcastic. I don't lie to him. I don't tell him something that's false. And I don't create a situation where it's like you're playing with somebody's intelligence. You're misleading them. When I talk with Dr. Murdoch, I don't argue with him. I don't contradict what he's saying. I don't interject. Opposite. And as you can see, that's why he'll ask me questions. That's why he'll, he'll be amazed by what I say. Because the respect is mutual on my end. When I came to the Wisdom Center, I never told nobody who I was. It was him that told everybody who I was. I never, and, and when people came to me in secret, I would be silent. One had discerned that I was a prophet. Because Juan was studying me how I was moving. And when I, even when I was in the wisdom center, miracles would happen. While I, while I hid myself as a worker. Supernatural things would happen around people that I would come around. And Juan was one of the eye watcher that viewed the power of God. And even then, I charged no man to say anything about me. Because my time had not come. Never stepped into familiarity with Dr. Mike Murdoch. Never forgot how we met. How you don't step into familiarity, don't forget how you met. Never forgot how we met. It's always before me. And when Dr. Mike Murdoch is always thanking me, I'm always thanking him back. No relationship could go wrong when familiarity is absent. No relationship could go wrong when familiarity is absent. You want to protect yourself from familiarity? Don't forget how you met. Did you hear what I said? Don't forget how you met. Did you hear what I said? Don't forget how you met. You want to stay away from familiarity? Don't forget how you met. Keep the first things first. Why did Jesus rebuke the church in the book of Revelation and say return back to your first works? Because over time, you get so entangled with God devilish information and the devil is talking here a little with your mind talking there a little with your mind until there's an ocean of deception then built up inside of you ready to spring out of you Wow. Familiarity. Wow. Familiarity. Don't forget how you met. Don't forget how you met. 
don't forget how you met. As time goes on, you forget your first works. You forget how you started. And you corrupt yourself through time. You let time dictate to you what you're going to prioritize. And, and the fleshly mind start to step back in. You forget how you met. 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 Isn't it crazy how time happens and you get far away from where the Lord meets you? The Lord reaches for you. Hey, daughter, it's me. I love you. Hey, son, it's me. I love you. Hey, don't get fooled by the body I pick. This me. I just came down to come and talk with you. And teach you because you made a vow to me that you was going to serve me and glorify me before I sent you down here. And here I am. Can you see me? It's me. It's your father. You Look, it's me. And people, over time, you forget how the Lord meets you. The day comes where you watch the Lord and you say, the Lord ain't talking right. I don't like those words that the Lord uses. I don't like how the Lord is acting. No, 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 I don't like this. And, and over time, the devil just keep on building up information till you're not even with the Lord. You're not even with the Lord no more. The devil ain't got nothing for you. The devil ain't got nothing for nobody. The devil broke. The devil homeless. The devil homeless. Why you think that hell, hell is created for the devil? The devil ain't got nowhere to live. The devil trying to live through your ignorance and your rejection of the Lord. The devil ain't got nowhere to live. The devil homeless. The Bible, what did Job say? That the devil was going to and fro the earth. Why, why the devil wasn't at home? Because the devil ain't got no home. Ain't that what the Bible said? The devil was going to and fro the earth. And God said, have you considered my servant Job? God said, I see you out there homeless, going back and forth. Let me give you something to do, because you, you, you just, you just looking for trouble. Let me give you something to do. And saints, here's another thing. Job did not know that God had said that about Job. There's oftentimes you don't know what God is saying about you in the spirit world. And you don't know that God is, 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 is pitting his bet on you. He's pitting his, 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 his money on you. He's pitting his, 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 his oath on you. You're going to let God lose the bet and you're going to choose Satan. You won't let Satan get the victory and, and so that God's bet look like, like he lost because you chose to go contrary to him and link up with the devil against God so God could go to, so, so Satan could go to God and say, see, I told you. I told you that she wasn't no good. I told you that she was a liar. I told you that she was serving me. I told you that this is not your real, your real friend. Look, she don't talk to you. He don't talk to you. They don't sow into you. He don't sow into you. They don't got no honor. They don't walk in the purpose you gave them. You told them to do this. Look, they're not even doing it no more. You told them to say this. They're not even saying it no more. You told them to be in this place. They're not even in that place no more. And Satan, people don't even know when God is having that same scenario with Job, with you. And when you, when you feel irritated and upset, your life in the courtroom, baby. You feeling the pressure. You got to know why you feeling the pressure because your life is in the courtroom. That's, that, uh, now you understand when I be saying that is a judgment time. Now you understand what I mean by that. 
Your life is underneath evaluation and you don't know the conversation that's going on about you. And you feel the pressure and you feel the irritation. Oh, I'm irritated. Oh, I don't want to hear that. Yeah, you don't want to hear that. Yeah, you don't understand. This ain't the time for you to be like that. Because your life doesn't need judgment right now. You might not make it. Sometimes people be dying abru abruptly all of a sudden. And you're like, how they died so fast? They didn't understand that their life was underneath siege. It was underneath judgment. And they was up there so loose in their mouth, loose in their decision, loose in their ways. You don't know it. There's not much time left. Hold on to the mercy of God and cooperate with it. 